So welcome to all of you Shiksha 360 JAP classes. Today we have to discuss the chapter number four of the retail banking. Very, very important topic for the examination point of view. Both theory and numerical question we will expect from this chapter. So first of all, here they will ask the regarding the banking system in India. Clear? They have asking regarding the banking system in India. So let's discuss very basic information which you have already covered when you are preparing for the IBPS examination. All these things they have to be mentioned here. So banking system in India, basically it is governed under the Banking Regulation Act 1949. Okay. Banking Regulation Act, you have to be discussed in detail under the BRBL cap. Okay. In that, there are four to five chapters just on the Banking Regulation Act where we have to cover all the provisions regarding that. So banking system in India, basically it is governed under the Banking Regulation Act 1949 by the Reserve Bank of India, which provide the clear what it provide, which provide the regulatory framework for the supervision of banks in the country. Clear basically what it will provide, which provide the regulatory framework for the supervision of banks in the country. <clears throat> Further, the Banking Regulation Act 1949 was passed as the Banking Companies Act 1949 and it came into force from 16th of March 1949. Very, very important question. Sometimes they will ask in the examination when this act was came into force. It came into force <clears throat> from 16th of March 1949 and changed to Banking Regulation Act 1949 basically from March 1, 1966. Okay, further, earlier basically it is to be known as the Banking Companies Act 1949 and later on basically it was changed into the Banking Regulation Act 1949, clear, 1949, when it was changed here, basically from March 1, 1966. Now let's further, so the development of the banking sector basically can be divided into three phases, phase one, phase two, phase three. So what are the three phases here? So what are the three phases? First one that is the early phase that is during the 1770 to 1969. Clear? Kindly remember that why this one is the early phase because in 1969. Anyone has remembered basically when the banks was nationalized? Please tell fast if anyone has remembered. All of you, basically most of you, basically belong from the public sector banks. So kindly tell fast when the nationalization, first nationalization takes place. <clears throat> July 1969. Exact date if anyone remember mentioned here. Further, second phase that is the nationalization phase. During the period 19 from 1969 to 1991, third period that is the liberalization LPG policy, basically which by the PV Narsimha Rao government clear at that time finance minister was Dr. Mohan Singh clear they have launched the LPG policy. The liberalization or the banking sector reforms phase from 1991 and continues till date. Clear basically from when? From 1991 and continues till date. That is the phase third. Now move further to the next point here. So what are the banks? How the nationalized takes place? What are the different banks at the time of independence? All these things. So prior to independence, basically there were close to 600 banks. Approximately 600 banks basically were presently in India, out of which only a few survive today. During the British rule, the three presidential banks, clear during the British rule, basically the three presidential banks of India were established at Kolkata, Mumbai, and Chennai. Clear? During the British rule, the three presidential banks of India were established at the Kolkata. <coughs> First is at Kolkata, second is at Mumbai, and third is at Chennai, which merged as the Imperial Bank of India in 1921. Clear, basically, which merged as the Imperial Bank of India in 1921. Later on, 
the imperial bank of india basically later on the imperial bank of india was later nationalized in the 1955 clear the imperial bank of india basically was later nationalized in 1955 and was named the state bank of india clear and basically it was named as the state bank of india which is currently the largest public sector bank clear so earlier state bank of india basically was to be known as the imperial bank of india clear imperial bank of india for the next point that is in 1969 there was nationalization the government of india decided to nationalize the banks under the banking regulation act 1949 during which 14 banks were nationalized clear basically during which how many banks were nationalized that is 14 banks were nationalized to be here i remember these things <clears throat> next one in the year 1980 another six banks were nationalized taking the total to 20 clear so in the year 1980 basically another six banks were nationalized taking the total to 20 apart from these banks clear apart from these banks the seven subsidiaries of sb clear there are different subsidiary like state bank of patiala state bank of jaipur bikaner and jaipur state bank clear travancore there are seven subsidiaries or with the passage of the time all were merged with the sb Okay. So in 1980, first of all in 1969, 14 banks were nationalized. After that, in 1980, six banks were nationalized. And SBI it is a different. Clear SBI it is established under the SBI Act 1955. So can anyone tell basically how many public sector banks are presently exist in the market? Please tell fast. As all of you are aware that basically in 2016 there was merger. It is going to be takes place. Clear. of three banks and after that i think in the year 2020 first of april 2020 merger takes place so can anyone tell how many presently public sector banks are to be available there please tell fast for the next one this is for question so in the final phase starting in the 90s the government has set up the nurse human committee clear <coughs> so in the final phase basically that is like after the 1991 there were establishment of the private banks also clear so in the final phase starting in the 90s the government set up the narsimhan committee to manage the major reforms in the banking sector clear basically the government has set up the narsimhan committee to manage the major reforms in the banking sector during the period rbi gave out licenses clear basically during the period RBI gave out licenses to open private sector banks in the country. Clear after that, <clears throat> licenses basically were to given basically to open the private sector banks also in the country. So few public private sector banks basically during this period have emerged among us the biggest banks in the country. Clear so after that later on, continuously private banks are to be going to be open in the country. Clear going to be open in the country. they will provide the license presently you will see that basically there are lot of private sector banks even small finance banks basically are going in the market clear are performing in the market now we have to we move to the next point here so banking in india you have to go through that now what is the main topic of our today's discussion i will discuss here that is the profitability clear very very important for the examination point of view so profitability profitability that is like employees are getting salary when the employees basically will getting the salary if the organization basically will be in the profit <clears throat> only in that case clear if the organization basically it is in the profit only in that case basically employees basically will get the salary clear so now let's discuss regarding that so before moving to the branch profitability so let us first have a broad view of profit and profitability so what is a profitability basically profitability basically it is a measure of an organization clear what is profitability basically profitability it is an a measure of an organization's profit relative to its expenses clear so so profitability that is basically it depends upon your expenses clear if your expenses is more so there is less profit or even you have eaten up all the profit basically with the more the expenses clear so it depends upon case to case how much your expenses are to be there so organizations 
that are more sufficient efficient clear organizations that are more efficient will realize more profit as a percentage of its expenses than a less efficient organization which spend more to generate the same profit clear which spend more to generate the same profit clear <laughs> so it depends here what they say that organization basically that are more efficient will realize more profit as a percentage of its expenses than a less efficient organization which spend more to generate the same profit clear so it depends upon the efficiency how much they are doing the output here clear how much they are doing the output here so in other words we can say that what is profitability profitability basically it is a measure of measurement of efficiency and ultimately it's a success or failure clear it's a measurement of the efficiency and ultimately it's a success or failure so further so a further definition of profitability basically can be a business ability to produce a return on an investment clear so basically if you are doing an investment how much return basically we are getting from that it depends clear basically on that profitability basically depends on that like you are saying that like we have to say that like we are investing in a fixed deposit of rupees 50000 so how much interest after a specific period basically we will get clear how much interest basically after a specific period we will get it depends its return like if we are doing an sip so how much return basically we will get from that that is to be the its efficiency or return so a further definition of profitability basically can be business ability to produce a return clear that is to produce a return on an investment based on its resources clear based on its resources in comparison with an alternative investment clear in comparison with an alternative assessment investment so therefore it can be said that profitability it is the relative measure clear so what we can say that therefore it can be said that what is profitability basically profitability basically it is the relative measure of the profit so what we can say that basically we can say that the profitability basically it is the relative measure of the profit it compares how much profit a company makes clear so what it make say that basically it compares how much profit basically a company makes compared with its overall revenue and cost clear <coughs> so it compares basically how much profit a company makes compared with its overall revenue and cost clear compared basically with its overall revenue and cost to be here so now further basically what is to be profit here So what is the profit? That is profit. It is the money a business pulls out after accounting for all its expenses. Clear, basically after getting out all its expenses, whatever they will left in the end, that is to be known as the profit. Clear, whatever basically they will get left in the end, basically that is to be called as the profit here. So what are the types of the profit? Clear, what is the main crux of our today's session? That is the types of the profit which we have to discuss now. so there are or the three major types of the profit are gross profit operating profit and net profit clear so what are the three major types of the profit the three major types of the profit are to be the gross profit operating profit and net profit and all of which can be found on the income statement clear all of which can be found on the income statement so each profit type gives analyst clear basically each profit type gives analyst basically more information about the company performance especially when it is compared to other competitors and time periods okay <clears throat> so each profit type gives analyst basically more information clear because as we are analyzing all the expenditures of the company so basically we are getting more information basically about a company's performance especially when it's it is compared to the other competitors and time periods clear basically especially when it is compared clear especially basically when it is compared to the other competitors and the time periods clear and the time periods so now let's discuss here i will say that basically there are three types of the profit gross profit operating profit net profit clear please tell fast here anyone has any knowledge regarding that or not just please tell in the form of yes or no like you are say like presently all banks basically will release their annual results clear most probably basically we will expect after 15th of april till 30th of june 31st of april 
all banks basically will release their financial results. So what is the meaning of the gross profit, operating profit, net profit? They will see that net NPA basically decreases by this figure. Gross NPA basically will decreases by this figure. Clear? Similarly, gross profit basically will increase by this figure, operating profit or all these things. Clear? So now let's try to understand very, very important and very basic things. So gross profit, operating profit and net profit. So the first thing basically which we have to discuss here the first level of profitability it is called the gross profit clear which we have to cover here that is fit to call as a gross profit what is that basically which is sales minus cost of goods sold <coughs> clear sales minus cost of goods sold that is to be comes under the gross profit clear so the first level of profitability basically which is to be which is sales minus the cost of goods sold. So sales are the first line item on the income statement. Clear. So what are sales basically? Sales are the first line item on the income statement and the cost of goods sold is generally listed below it. Clear. What are sales? Sales are the first line item on the income statement and the cost of goods sold is generally just listed below it. For example, if the company A, clear, if company A has one crore sales, clear, so how many crore, that is sales here, it has to be one crore. Please try to understand this example because with the help of only this example, we have to understand all the three points. What is gross, what is operating, what is net. So if the sales here, that is, if company has one crore in sales and the, what are they, what they are selling, what is the cost of that is just to be 60 lakh. So how much they have gross profit? So it means that the gross profit it is to be rupees 40 lakh, 1 crore minus 60 lakh. Here 1 crore minus 60 lakh, basically it means that the gross profit here it is to be 40 lakh. So for the, sometimes basically they will ask, this is a gross profit, clear? Hope all of you are able to understand what is gross profit, that is sales minus the cost of goods sold, clear? That is sales minus the cost of goods sold that is to be called as the gross profit now next thing which we have to discuss is that is what is the gross margin here so if we divide the gross profit clear divide the gross profit that is 40 lakh by the sales for gross profit by the sales so then what we will have get basically gross profit margin so what is gross profit margin that is what is gross profit that is 40 lakh Divide by sales that is 60 lakh. Mm. Sales that is 1 crore into 100. So what it is to be profit margin that is to be 40%. Clear that is to be 40%. Clear. So 40% it is to be the gross profit margin. Okay. So here in the end they will uh, write it once again. Basically what is the gross profit? Gross profit it is equal to the total sales minus the cost of goods sold. Clear. <clears throat> So what is gross profit? I will tell you once again, basically gross profit, basically it is equal to the total sales minus the cost of goods sold that is to be known as the gross profit here. Okay, so now we have to be move to the next one. So the second level of profitability, clear? So here the second level of profitability it is operating profit clear the second level of profitability basically it is to be operating profit which is calculated how we can calculate the operating profit basically which is calculated by deducting the operating expenses clear basically for running that business like basically we can say that operating profit like basically they are paying the salaries to their employees or all other expenses like building rent all other things clear that is to be comes under the operating expenses clear so that is to be deducted so uh, what we left after that, that is to be known as the operating profit, clear? So the second level of profitability here, the second level of profitability, basically it is the operating profit, which is calculated, how it will be calculated? <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Which is calculated basically by deducting operating expenses from the gross profit, clear? Basically, which is calculated by deducting the operating expenses from the gross profit. So gross profit basically looks at profitability after direct expenses, clear? So how we will move towards the gross profit? Basically gross profit basically looks at profitability 
after direct expenses and operating profit basically looks at profitability after the operating expenses clear kindly remember that basically this type of thing you will get in the examination so basically gross profit how basically we will calculate basically after direct expenses and basically after the operating expenses we are going to move towards the operating profit okay so like now how we have to calculate here operating profit like company a <coughs> has basically we will left that is gross profit 40 lakh now further what they're saying basically company a has rupees 20 lakh in the operating expenses clear basically company a has rupees 20 lakh in the operating expenses and operating profit it is to be so what is operating profit clear operating profit what we have to calculate basically how we have to calculate that is gross profit minus operating expenses so what we have left that is the operating profit okay so out of the gross profit what we are expenses what we are spending basically in the operating expenses clear basically for operating the business that we have to be subtract from that and what we have left in the end that is to be known as the operating profit clear that is to be known as the operating profit clear so gross profit here that is 40 lakh minus operating expenses that is to be 20 lakh so what we will left in that that is to be rupees 20 lakh clear so how we can calculate the operating profit margin like we have calculated the gross profit margin how we have to calculate the operating profit margin so divide the operating profit by the sales clear divide the operating profit by the sales and what we will get in the end basically by the sales for the operating profit margin which is to be 20 percent clear operating profit that is to be 20 lakh by the sales sales here that is to be 1 crore into 100 so what we will have that is operating profit margin that is to be 20 percent here clear so what we will get in the end that is the operating profit margin which is to be 20 percent here clear that is to be 20 percent here <clears throat> now we have to be move to the next point operating profit that is gross profit minus operating expenses so next one that is what is the operating profit margin so how we can calculate the operating profit margin what is the operating profit upon the total sales now next one that is what is the net profit clear what is the net profit clear after the discussion of this one i will share one more video with all of you in that you will have to able to understand regarding the npa what is net npa what is gross npa all these things you are able to understand basically with the help of that video i will share after the session in your group with one example clear i have discussed one example with the help of just one example you are able to understand all the points clear that definitely will help you in the examination basically for solving the numericals regarding the npa <laughs> so next one that is the third level of profitability it is a net profit which is the income left over after all expenses clear so the third level of profitability basically it is a net profit which is the income left over clear which is the income left over after all the expenses clear basically all the expenses that is operating expenses we have to subtract out other sales and now last next one in the net profit we have to also left over basically what we have to exclude that is taxes and interest clear that is we have to also deduct from that profit clear we have to also deduct basically from the operating profit to move towards the net profit clear to move towards the net profit to be here so the third level of profitability basically it is a net profit which is the income left over after all expenses including taxes and interest have been paid <clears throat> if interest here that is what we left that is operating profit that is 20 lakh and here if the interest is 5 lakh and taxes here it is to be 5 lakh so how much we have to deduct from that that is to be 10 lakh okay so if the interest here it is to be 5 lakh and taxes are another that is to be 5 lakh so net profit basically it is to be calculated by deducting both of these from the operating profit clear so the net profit basically we have to calculate by deducting basically both of these basically from the operating profit so in the example of our company that is 
the answer it is be 20 lakh minus 10 lakh let 10 lakh basically what is that 5 lakh interest plus 5 lakh to be tax here <clears throat> 20 lakh minus 10 lakh basically which equals to be 10 lakh. So earlier we know that basically gross profit here it has to be 40 lakh. Operating profit it has to be 20 lakh. And what they have left in their hand that is to be 10 lakh. Only 10% of that clear here we can say that gross profit it has to be 40%. In the end basically we will just left with only 10% clear in the end basically how much amount basically we have left with. <coughs> We have left only with the 10% here. Okay. So net profit, what is that? Net profit, it is equal to the operating profit minus taxes and interest. Clear. Yeah. So what we have left in the net profit, net profit basically it is equal to the operating profit minus taxes and interest. So please tell fast now. It is clear to all of you basically what is the difference between the operating profit, net profit, and gross profit. Very, very important. Recently, all banks basically will release their annual balance sheet and I will try to cover basically in a short video, not live session, we'll discuss the balance sheet of any one company clear basically in which we will discuss all these factors. What is the net NP? What is the gross NP? What is net profit? What is gross profit? What is operating profit clear? All these things I will try to cover in that session. Okay. So in this session, we have to discuss up to this much point. If anyone has any doubt, any query, please ask first. I will share one more video basically with all of you that is regarding the NP. And there are some other methods like what is return on assets and the return on equity. We will share with you. Okay. So thanks to all of you for joining this discussion.